everybody welcome back to cougar talk weekly today we are going and delving into the forums to see what some people are talking about um it's there's a couple of things that we could talk about that are pretty interesting um and just some crazy crazy suggestions that um you know, i don't know just have a a pretty interesting out like concept in the, the thing so the first one is the removal of trifecta achievements when i started reading this i was like oh my god um i mean the guy does make some excellent points so let's uh let's kind of go over this chevalier mew chevalier mew in order to avoid any misunderstandings, trifecta achievements are granted for completing trials slash dungeons on hard mode in a limited amount of time without a single group member's death. The concept itself isn't bad and the existence of set achievements is motivating to improve oneself, although it often happens to be an extremely stressful and lengthy endeavor. The bigger issue is the equation is poor games performance, crashes and bugs not allowing for a smooth rating experience. There's only so much you can blame on the player's connection and hardware. More, of, more often than not, the game just doesn't work. Yeah, sometimes, but um, that's probably on PC. On PlayStation and Xbox is more of like, do you have the next generation console? Um, what's your internet like? That's the connection plays a little bit more into the equation. Um, and then he says, every trial has its own set of bugs. Sometimes you need to adjust to the feature. Other times it's just unavoidable and you hope it won't happen in your perfect run. That is true. Um, sometimes, you know, like in VHoff a while back, uh, Purge was really, really finicky. And no matter how much you Purge, it was still bad. So... I can definitely, you know, say that. Yes, the concept of certain mechanics is great, but often implemented poorly, causing accidental deaths that shouldn't take place. Um, things like taunted trash ads suddenly doing 180 to erase one of your the DDs is synergy mechanic not working. On top of that, tanks have to deal with cool features like block bug. Every new update brings new changes and what comes with it, new bugs. Balance changes often require readjustments and even even whole reprogressions. What is not doing us any favors? Okay, that's kind of weird, but... Um, and that's true. Uh, one group that I know um, that had a reprogression is a Dawnbringer group that uh, has some guildies from us. And they were slip, uh, skipping the conga lines in VK hard mode. And now they can't due to some of the changes that were made to the healings um, situation in the game. And that's not like a bad thing. Like it happens. But, um, you know, they, they were doing that before the patch. Um, and then the healing changes happened and they had to reprog that so i can definitely understand balance changes do require readjustments and sometimes that that is really tough because you get really down and then people are like you know this sucks because we completed this we should be able to do this but sometimes you have to do things a different way to make sure that um those balance changes you know it works for your group now the toughest part of the trifecta is the no death um and a lot of times a lot of places that is correct a god slayer is one trifecta that from my understanding maybe maybe um uh, uh rock grove too it's a little bit of um you you gotta get the time too so i've seen people complete that with um no death and then the time was just like a minute off or something like that but this the trifecta is that 11 other people with you must perform flawlessly without random issue of out of their control but at the end of the day where people and potential mistakes are not being forgiven by the game 
without room for error progressions often last months and half of them won't reach designated goals especially the more demanding trials gs or rock grove are often turning out to be failing hard mode objectives to begin with what signals that content is very demanding few can flawlessly perform therefore greatly diminishing accessibility for larger groups of players getting 12 well-performing people is often a logistical nightmare that is true also considering the frequent need for replacements rotation of people occurs due to changes in the real life we have experienced that plenty in uh, the chill team and it happens like people have a new job people will get promoted people you know their life situation changes they get a kid you know it, it's that's just it happens guys it's the circle of life and you know it changes allowing for playing for a certain amount of time only and for so long spending plus and minus five months a few days a week in one trial is far from our dream and it's true so uh stress factor is the other thing rating player base is mostly made up of working class people that is true struggling from day to day so we can chill in a bit in the evenings and hope to relieve some stress but that what would you say for stressing out even more for a writing environment because that's what mm, uh, often most of us feel like after an hour of unsuccessful runs now i mean it's true um now imagine placing yourself in the shoes of a new player who's willing to become a veteran raider hoping to get all the trifectas eventually. If you're good enough to become a member of a score pushing group, it shouldn't take that long. But in case of being even slightly limited by hardware, connection blah blah blah, um, you are having a really long journey lasting months per progression. Having seven of such to catch up with the prospect of another on the horizon is really daunting. So this guy is proposing to remove the trifectas, keeping the more popular titles as the main reward. The most challenging part will still be the no death without other requirements, but allow for a more diverse approach in setup and tactics. Splitting progressions in two thirds for respective achievements. That's probably also the easiest and least work consuming way of releasing those tensions. So he's talking about splitting the trifectas. I mean, that could work, but th then it's not a trifecta. <laughs> um, that's probably also the easiest way. As an alternative, you could also categorize those individual achievements, making it more accessible. Although, that could lead to an increase in toxicity among players. The other idea would be to allow for a certain amount of deaths to be forgiven and still grant the achievement. But is it a flawless run at this point? It's not. I mean, the perfect solution is fixing the game. I agree. And then they did a little poll here. And 10% of people said they removed trifecta achievements from dungeons and arenas and trials. I bet you most of those people that are doing that are people that can't do them. You know? Um, and then I would not be opposed to this. Grant trifecta achievements individually for player, not the group. Um... I would be okay for this, but I still do not like that. Um, but if it was between removing them and that, then I would definitely take this over removing them. The reason is because I probably would have a lot of the Frifecta achievements already. Believe it or not. <laughs> so, um, shoot, I would have had IR <laughs> a long time beforehand. Um, and I would have probably had Griffin Heart <laughs> as well. Um, I mean, it's true. I would have had Griffin Heart. Um, I would have had Dawn Ringer way sooner as well, too. But, um, I mean, it is what it is. I, I get it. But the whole point of the trifecta with the, the trials. It's so you and your play like it's it's hard. It's a hard achievement, so I understand. But like I said, if if it was between these two options, I would definitely do that one. I'd rather them not remove the trifectas. Um, if that's the case, like just do this, grant trifectas individually, and then a lot of people are for that, fifty-two percent, and then allow for X amount of deaths to still complete the achievement. No, it's a trifecta achievement. Like no, six percent. No. Get, get out of here with that. 
And then 32% decreased difficulty on the end game content to game to make game more accessible. Well, here's the funny part, folks. That's what the power creep is there for. Um, and this is why um, VMO when it first came out, it was a hard trial because the power creep at that time was not like the power creep now. Like people weren't hitting, like people were hitting maybe 25k on a dummy at that time when when it first came out and you know when the trial finally got the hard mode done and such i remember i think it was like 30k dps that people were doing on on a three mil dummy um and then you know we got the six mil dummies which was i think 35k um so but now like you can beat it super fast super easy uh, and skip even going in the back. So, uh, trifectors are the only challenging part of ESO. They require practice and teamwork. Um, if they were removed, made easier, or allowed some dust, then they would be completed within a week of new content being released. For trials, especially this will leave top groups with nothing to work towards the remaining 51 weeks of the year. I agree with fixing the game. We had a DSR last weekend where 10 out of 12 players disconnected at the same time, then had a login queue to get back in. I'd also support adding additional achievements for things like personal trifecta or non-hard mode no death speed run. Maybe throw in some unique cosmetics and titles for these as well. Stepping stones of victory along the way are good things, removing the reward for perfection is not. This post, this all of these and this guy's like where's the option for none of these i agree there's no option for none of these but i would definitely take that oh my god this is perfect this is this is one thing that i would be on board for the adding additional achievements for things like personal trifecta or non-hard mode no death speed runs and then throwing some cosmetics. Um, cosmetics are probably the easier ones to do than titles. Um, you could do for like a title for a personal trifecta. Um, and it's just stepping stones of victory along the way. I agree, like this is pretty awesome. So Wrath of Innos, this is, I'm 100% with you on this. Uh, where is it? The leave it as it's option. It's, if it's too stressful, don't do it. No one is forcing you to run God Slayer if you don't want to. Removing the challenge for those people who do want to improve and progress in an organized group is just ridiculous. I agree. I agree. Um, <clears throat> and then, you know, this guy says another vote for leave as is. Leave him as is. So there's, you know, there's a lot of people that are like, leave it as this mud crab attacks is i'd rather go the opposite direction bring in skins and mounts i trifecta is a thing to celebrate it's hard work and there had to and there had better be something amazing as a reward at the end of it rather than a title it's true that there are times when the server is awful and the group knows they haven't got any chance that night but i can't imagine cutting out trifectas just because of server performance there's a big difference between score pushing and trifecta trifecta groups aren't aren't in such a big rush to and willing to invest time to prog except some level of learning curve permit diverse builds because you don't really need bleeding edge dps adjust builds and perfect each boss fight to fit the need of the groups to improve the no deaths they may be willing to build up defense as a trade-off to dps and at some point they're at the level where each person can do the whole thing with their eyes closed and the primary cause for failure is system disconnects and lag spikes it takes a lot of patience to get it, but I think making the reward nice for a change is the way to go rather than taking away the trifecta. I mean, you guys, we're getting... VSS, the trifecta gives you the, the God Slayer title on the mount. So, like, they are giving you a mount and a title. Um, I personally think that there should be more plunder for as well you know if you do a trifecta the, it should be like a you get your regular plunder and then like a 
50k or something plunder um, in the mix for these DLC trials and I'm talking about for the DLC trials any trial that has a trifecta they could do that um, and I know Vmo doesn't have a trifecta but it should I really would love to see Vmo uh, trifecta but uh, yeah it's just something like this um, just like a separate little plunder that says hey and it, it would be a weekly thing so you couldn't do it over and over and over again and kind of like abuse the crap out of it um, but it'll be a weekly thing. Um, so it says, hey, here, you got this. Um, and it'll be per character as well. So like a weekly per character. That way, if you want to go in there in a different character and do it, that does promote the chance to do it. And it gives a little bit of a reward as well after you completed the trifecta. Um, I'm not saying 50K is enough. Might not be. But it's a start. Um, that, you know, that's pretty good. So a lot of people, um, some guy wanted to remove antiquities because it takes too much time to collect them all. Now you want to remove trifectas. What is it with you guys that you need to collect, achieve everything in the game that is designed in a way to make it practically impossible? Oh Lord. But anyways, next topic. This is a pretty good one. Uh, gold crafted furnishing wood elf. Throwing remains unable to be sat in. Why? Um, I remember that this has been an ongoing thing. Uh, I mean, it's very much able to be sat in. It's a beautiful item, and I like to see it being able to be used, please. Yup, in a way, it's a bit symbolic of how Bosmers have been ignored since launch. <laughs> I believe Wood Elves also have the least amount of player homes as well. Oh my god. So the Wood Elves are like just getting fogged. Not only like <laughs> they're getting they're getting crazy, and this guy Blue Ravens like in a way it's a bit of symbolic of how Bosmers have been ignored since launch. <laughs> it's it's nuts. No, it's, that's funny. It's too funny. Um, but <laughs> I just thought I'd put this in here too because this is this is great. And uh, the next one is Trial Finder could work. Dot dot dot. NMR111 says, a trial finder could work for a veteran if you could only queue if you had that particular achievement already on veteran. No more versions of trials would not need this to qualify for queue. I know what you're thinking. How do you get the achievement in the first place for vet? Well, that will stay as it is now through guilds and progression groups. It would make joining vet trials groups a lot easier. You wouldn't have to zone everyone, search for a particular room to fill. Maybe I'm wrong, but it's just an idea. Or a looking for group board where players can choose their own requirements and we don't have to follow arbitrary restrictions set for by people who forget carry runs are a thing. I mean, I guess. Um, I mean, Animar does make a good point. Like, a trial finder could work. If you have that already achievement on that, like, it could work. Like, it could say, hey, you're eligible for this. Um, the looking for group board is also pretty good too um maybe kind of intertwine both of these um if you have a looking for group board and like tag certain achievements to it it's like you must have this 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 and this to join the group um that would be a logistical nightmare though but um i feel like if the devs don't have really anything to work on like this could be a cool quality of life change um but it's probably not gonna happen and then this next one, hiding pets in town. Does this thing work at all? I just checked and I have it turned on, but I still cannot even see the banker in Vivek because of the pets. And um, Danicat says, as far as I can tell, it will only hide pets if they're exactly on top of the banker or a crafting station. But if they're in a slightly different position, even right next to it, then they're not hidden. So maybe it helps people who play in first person occasionally, but otherwise it seems completely useless. And Spaceman Spiff says, yes, working perfectly as intended. And somebody's like, one step ahead and two backwards. I can't tell any difference. Um, Tashin says, it's not working the way supposedly intended, of course. Supposedly intended probably means re reading into the bear patch, note statements, what people really wanted to see, which didn't happen. I'm not fussed. I don't mind the pets wherever. You can always click through them to operate the red box reticles. 
I would pay real money to buy crowns that would get me a bounty certificate to kill sword pets and bears in town. Hey, the bears are not sorks, okay? The bears are wardens. So, that's too funny. I mean, it's still an issue. Um, but guys, come on, like... Eh, I agree, they should hide just pets in town, period. Just hide them. Hide them. Hide them all. And this guy says, don't get mad, but... What if you couldn't change the look of armor at outfit stations and instead always had to farm the mats to craft in the style you wanted? You could still change the color and look at your collections to view styles, but couldn't sink money into an outfit station, but instead into the style material player market. Just imagine what certain style materials would cost if this were the case. I don't actually want this, but it made me think of how basically useless most style materials are. Uh, Sparks Loss said this. It's actually a very good idea. Um, and then Sn uh, Snam Yap said, I actually found it very odd that they didn't make it so you needed style materials to change the looks in the outfit stations. Still wonder why they opted for that. Pretty much made the whole system material obsolete until they added the furniture stuff. And then, um, Danny Cat says, isn't that basically how it worked before the outfit system was added? Drop sets were restricted to the styles they dropped in. Crafted sets could be any style, but you needed the motif and material to craft them in that style. And then CP5 is like, you're right about the style materials being useless for armor, but since they're he also heavily used in home furnishings, there's still a need for them. But like Danny Cat said, that's exactly how it worked when outfit systems were just eye stations. It was nice since everyone could have that armor that wasn't red, blue, or a disguise. But ESO's current outfit system is actually really nice, and I prefer the boring and flat gold sink to the need um, to customize each piece of gear than have a set A not match set B when I try to swap them around. The current system is really nice in that. I agree. I really like the current system. Um, I think that you could kind of intertwine both to where if you have the whole motif and the uh, mats, you just pay a little percentage of the gold because you still need the gold sink a little bit. Um, so you could pay a small amount of the gold sink um, or an outfit token because um, you guys saw us has to sell outfit tokens, okay? And then um, if you didn't have the motif, um, you would pay like a certain amount plus the outfit token and um, or like, you know, a certain gold amount, big gold amount or something like that. Um, so yeah, that's pretty much it. That's, um, that's what I was, uh, looking at and, um, make sure you guys check out the normal trial weekends <clears throat> next weekend is going to be, um, cloud rest and kinds ages. So we are going to start making some rotations in the trials weekends and try to get some of these other trials, um, into the mix. So next weekend will be Kinds Ages and Cloud Rest, and then it will be Kinds Ages and Mob Lorcage. So you guys will have a little bit of fancy things to to work forward. And if you don't have any experience, don't worry. The CP doesn't matter. All are welcome. The Cougar Raiders tab is where it's at in Discord. If you have any questions, you can you can contact Hades or Ivory, or you can just tag me um as well cougars bay and i can answer or put point you in the right direction of what things are uh situated now if everybody understands they will be doing the um one big question i got asked is if the chat is going to be in the game or in psn it will be in the game um so these trials will will get game chat so make sure you understand that and are in chat to um listen to the instructions and what to do so if you haven't joined these and would like to get some gear and some coffers because there's some nice motifs that come out of these coffers um then you know there you go it's a very good farming environment while gaining some gear and 
just some experience um all together so i'll make sure you guys uh look that now the kugi madness schedule we have uh tales of tribute tonight and um the 226 is going to be fight club fist only and you're going to be able to participate in all of those so make sure that if you want to do that you get and have some fun in doing that now our boosters is going to be Cougars Bay, myself, Score Music on 9X, Reading X, and Merc271. Make sure you guys uh, help us out with boosting our Discord. Um, we recently lost the booster, so please help us gain that boost back. And if you want a shout out over here, this is the perfect way to do it. If you want to help the guild out, this is the perfect way to do it. If you don't have money, please don't do this. I don't want somebody like picking between the game and their food situation so let's not do that um all all in all you know make sure you guys uh get that taken care of if you would like to to become a discord booster and if you have friends um or family that want to become part of our family get them to join today we have weekly traders we're donation based we have Coogie Madness on Sundays, beginner and advanced prog teams, PvP nights, housing, and Tales of Tribute, and much more. So make sure that you guys uh, get those shoutouts out there and tell people, hey, come join my family in ESO. Again, thank you guys for watching, and have a good night.